recovery day so I wanted to share a little bit of that with you guys and what that means yes I'm drenched in sweat but I kept my heart rate at a very moderate pace so it's it's taking that mental half step back or sometimes it's just getting yourself moving depending on how you feel that day but active recovery usually I go 30 to 60 minutes of just moving and sweating I usually don't want to get started but I always feel better after and the reason I like to do active recovery is because it keeps some blood in the muscles and it keeps me from feeling lethargic or sluggish the next day so typically I take one active recovery day a week and one full rest day I usually put my active recovery day on Thursday and my full rest day on Sunday but depending on the week and our schedule I might flip those around but if you guys are looking to increase your aerobic capacity if you're looking for a good style of an active recovery day think movements that aren't gonna load your joints a ton stuff that you can just keep moving through that aren't super technical so you can kind of get into a good rhythm and a good flow I hit a 45 minute AMRAP of 30 cow skier into 30 goblet squats. I did choose to go slightly heavier uh, with a 53, something that I knew I could do 20 unbroken. So that's gonna be the key for you. Then I moved to the assault bike, which was the worst part of this whole thing. 30 cal assault bike, followed by 20 dumbbell snatches, 50, 35, 30 cal row, followed by 20 box jumps with a step down. Specifically, no rebounding. So you just kind of are moving through those box jumps and they're just keeping your heart rate high. For example, that 30 calorie on the assault bike was taking me about three minutes. That's 10 calories a minute. Moving at a pretty consistent pace, if I was training hard, I can usually do 10 calories in 30 to 40 seconds. So I was significantly slower, but my whole entire goal was just to have my heart rate in a range that wasn't killing me, but was allowing me to sweat and get some really good blood flow to my muscles and just boost my mood and my energy and just help me feel better by giving me some good endorphins through that exercise. Let's, let's pose for the people, Milo. Pose for the people. <laughs> just finished the workout, so I'm going to go make my shake. Make a shake on active recovery and rest day, you're probably wondering why. I personally eat as much on a rest day or an active recovery day, if not more. And the reason being is because your body is trying to repair itself from all of the training that you've done leading up to this day and possibly weeks leading up to this. So you wanna make sure that you aren't cutting your calories so that your muscles can repair itself, your CNS can start to recover so you're ready to hit it hard the next day. I found when I was cutting my calories on rest days or active recovery days, I was not feeling recovered come the following days. So I'd get into training and I'm like, man, I feel really sluggish, I feel tired, I don't understand, I didn't do anything yesterday. There's two parts to that. For me, moving lightly with a sustained heart rate makes me feel better the following day. It doesn't beat me down. And then two, keeping my calories at my normal amount or slightly increasing them also helps me sleep better and just feel like I get a better all around recovery. So I'm gonna go make that shake and then I'm gonna take a shower since I'm super sweaty and I'm gonna take you guys through my active recovery day mobility stretch routine. Ow, it's pumpkin season pumpkin spice so next we are going to it's recovery day stretch so stretching is something I do regularly I like to use my go Wild mobility app which I'm going to talk to you guys about here in a second but first I have a quick question Patrick and I are in a debate as you can see we have two different curtains here we just got a new rug which is much better than the old brown one that we had but we have a yellow curtain which kind of matches our front door and we have a teal curtain Patrick likes the yellow. I don't like either. I have one on Amazon that I really want to order. It's like really light and it's yellow and white and I think it'll go really well, but we want to take a vote. Do you guys like the yellow? Do you like the teal? Or do you like what I'm talking about? The really light yellow and white one that I think would go very nicely in this room. Second, it's pumpkin season, so I've already got my pumpkin candle lit. But let's get into these stretches. And so on an active recovery day, I like to get my yoga mat out. Kind of sets the tone. So I'm gonna roll this guy out. It's a little bit dirty because last time I did it outside, I have to vacuum after this. But 
Anyways, so I like to focus just kind of on a full body routine. So I'm gonna hit my hips, I'm gonna hit my lower back, I'm gonna hit a little bit of my chest because I tend to have a really tight chest which pulls my shoulders forward, which can hinder my overhead positioning. I'm also doing a bit more bodybuilding right now. So that means I'm working specifically my chest, my biceps, my triceps in different ways than I am when I'm training for the games. So things feel a little bit tighter and as I get tighter and I kind of work those muscles to failure, I feel like my range of motion starts to shorten. So it's really important to make sure that we're taking the time to maintain our mobility, if not increase that kind of that range of motion. By increasing that range of motion, it's only going to help our lifting. It's only going to help our gymnastics movements. It's only going to help us in the gym. So something I like to spend a good amount of time on. So it's just going to be a full body stretch. I usually spend one to two minutes per stretch. I'll hold a couple positions like the child's pose and things like that for up to three minutes at a time. And the reason we want to hold things so long is because we have this fascia that encases our muscle. And if we're not holding the positions for longer than 30 seconds, we don't ever give the fascia a chance to kind of start to release. So especially for somebody like me who's a little bit tighter, I'm not super flexible, I'm not super mobile, I have to hold these positions for a little bit longer to really get into the muscle and to actually let the fascia start to release. So if you're stretching for 20 to 30 seconds and you're like, gosh, I'm really not seeing any benefit, start holding those positions a little bit longer and I think that you will really start to reap that reward and you'll start to see some benefits in the future, but you also have to stay consistent. So I've got some coaching done, got a little bit of programming done, I got my workout in, I got lots of calories in, I did a little bit of body work, and now I'm going to sit at my computer and catch up on some admin work and also work on some future events for CFP and some other stuff that we've got going on. So I like to make sure that I take time for myself throughout the day, so getting that workout in and that good sweat then making sure I spend time mobilizing because that is super important on an active recovery day. And then also once I kind of finish up with this admin work, I'll spend the rest of the evening just taking some time for myself. I like to build in a little bit of time to read, a little bit, a little bit of time to snuggle with Milo. Maybe I'll take him on a walk and enjoy the sunshine because we're having a beautiful here day, a beautiful day here, I can't talk today, <laughs> a beautiful day here in Columbus, Ohio. And so I think just those active recovery days they don't need to be stressful and they shouldn't be stressful, but you can do exercise without it being stressful. It can be enjoyable and it can make you feel really good. So I hope that you guys learned something today, whether it was about nutrition, whether it was about kind of what an active recovery day looks like versus a rest day, or maybe some stretches that you can implement into your regular routine. Stretching is important. I like to do my static stretching post-workout and my dynamic stretching pre-workout. And also don't forget to check out the GoWAD Mobility app because they also have pre-WAD protocols, they have post-WAD protocols, and then they have rest day protocols. Just a daily routine that you can do every day and it's nice because somebody takes the guesswork out of it and you just follow along. So you could check that out as well. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to comment if you like the yellow, the blue curtain, or my idea, my imaginary idea that I pitched to you guys that's really important. Patrick and I are in a big debate about it. So make sure you drop that in the below in the comments. And if you like the video, smash the like button. It helps our channel. And we'll see you in the next one.